See Lion a cross platform IDE for C and C. Download now. My talk um, is anyone could buy a chainsaw. So I'm going to do a quick overview of my history. Uh, so I spent four years at the University of Portsmouth studying software engineering and computer science, uh, learning how it should be done. And I spent five years in industry so far learning how it's actually done. Uh, I've been involved in a couple of uh, open source side projects, so Hack Pompey. Uh, I, uh, it's where you turn up with a team, uh, you come up with an MVP, you build it, you develop it, uh, and then it may or may not work. I created a Lego robot arm that could be controlled over the internet, which was able to throw ducks across the room. Um, powered by some machine vision, so a little bit more basic than the chat GPTs and whatever we have now. Um, but I went back the next year to uh, hack Pompey and attach electrodes to my unwitting housemate and replace the robotic arm with a human arm uh, that was homegrown. I got to electrocute him in front of an entire lecture theatre, so that was brilliant. Uh, but I've also done some more serious work. Uh, I worked on census 2021. Uh, hands up if you forgot to fill out your census. Excellent. Uh, if you got someone knocking at your door, I was involved in the system behind that that was sending people out to check up and see if people had filled their things out. So the quote I'm going to focus on today uh, is, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it, uh, but I'm going to adjust it slightly for a more modern uh, audience, is those who haven't studied software engineering concepts but write code are condemned to repeat the mistakes of software engineers before their time. So. This is sort of boiled down to this new term, which some of you might have heard, called vibe coding. This is where you entirely depend on an AI or a large language model to write your code, and then you just deploy it, having never seen, understood, or written any code yourself. Uh, now, to some extent, that is a brilliant thing for accessibility, but there are quite a few problems. So I'm going to share with you now uh, some examples of a job I saw recently. Uh, your team is going to be tasked with inputs, outputs, file manipulation, logic, throw, uh, logic flow, and you're going to be doing that through Python. Uh, your team's going to be using Git, um, uh, Python to query large data sets. You're going to be achieving data outputs. Uh, and the purpose of your team is to solution architect data pipelines using technical software tools. Now, people in the room are probably thinking, that sounds like a software engineer style type of job. The only technical requirement for that was an awareness of languages such as Python or R, or the willingness to learn them. So on that note, I'm going to ask everyone here to imagine uh, you're at an airport, in this case Luton, because your flight got cancelled from Heathrow, uh, and you're going to choose your pilot. You can choose person A, um, who can take off, or person B, both of them can take off. Uh, both person A and person B can land a plane, uh, and both of them can fly in between. But person A is not qualified to do any of the former. So let's, and then person B is. So let's have a show of hands. Who would have person A fly their aeroplane? Excellent, we have a skydiving um, <laughs> enthusiast over there, fantastic. Um, but the same applies for programming, uh, in my opinion, uh, is that yes, person A can write software that will process your data, fulfill the minimum requirements you're asking of the team. They can create pipelines, but they're not trained and haven't received training in any way to do any of that. Now, it sounds like maybe a bit of a silly comparison, um, but there was a big problem with the London Ambulance Service when they dispatched their new ambulance system um, to send uh, ambulances out. Uh, some ambulances were dispatched to wrong addresses, not dispatched at all. People died from that, and that's not the only example. Um, today they use a uh, command point, and they deploy up to 420 ambulances a day on uh, a peak day. This was in 2024. Um, but they still do, in fact, um, software systems do massively impact people's lives. Um, so even though it's a bit funny that these jobs are going out like this, uh, it's actually very concerning, particularly if you might rely on an ambulance in the future. Fingers crossed no one has to, but you never know. So how did we get here? Well, programming languages are the power tools of the digital environment. Uh, and power tools get the job done more effectively. So people want to use them. Technical job creep is occurring in jobs that didn't used to require any coding at all. 
Now, as a little bit of, well, if you could script that uh, task that you repeat every day, you get a lot more done. And that sort of crept in there without any official training, but maybe a little bit of a nudge in the right direction. Um, and now AI has come along, and it has massively lowered the barrier for entry. Uh, and I'm sort of asking, is that a good thing? Because accelerating people who know how to code with maybe this is what you're meant to be coding could be very useful. Uh, a power tool in the right hands might be. But if you don't really know what you're doing, it might be a bit of a problem. So in the UK, anyone can buy a chainsaw if you're over 18. Um, but would you trust your 18-year-old self now to use the chainsaw safely, use it effectively, and use it appropriately? Uh, I wouldn't, but I remember my 18-year-old self. <laughs> um, but don't worry, because the manual is shipped with power tools, so you've got a great guide on how to use it. Um, unfortunately, now the manual is prone to hallucinate and will not tell you about the safety concerns uh, unless you already know to ask it about the safety concerns. So with a manual like that, would you trust yourself at 18 to use a chainsaw? So you should measure twice and cut once, but critically, you should know why you're cutting. So in this example here, this man is using the saw safely. Uh, he's using it effectively, because it's going to cut through the wood. And he's using it appropriately, because it is the right tool for the job. Unfortunately, though, when he finishes cutting, he's going to fall out of the tree and injure himself, because the context that a human would apply to this picture is something we do naturally, but AIs don't do at all. They don't know how to do it unless they're prompted to. So <laughs> the outcomes of this uh, is leading to legacy code bases of non-best practice, undocumented projects. And if you're a project manager, you should be having a heart attack right about now. Um, and they're not maintained by anyone because no one knows exactly how they work because the people that wrote them don't know how they work. So the skills required for these roles to catch up uh, isn't just functional. This is about a larger understanding of how software engineering should be done. Uh, and in jobs like the one uh, I threw up earlier, they don't actually have that training because it's not actually a software engineering job. But we also risk uh, the disillusionment of potentially brilliant software engineers. These people that are writing scripts, that are writing code to make their jobs and lives better, to work more, well, they might be potentially brilliant software engineers, but we might be wasting them by getting them to play golf with a rugby ball because they have no idea to ask what ball should I use. They just are copying and pasting without really understanding it. Here's my favorite web comic. So the consequences are that industry-wide uh, existing solutions aren't applied. Things like version control, things like IDEs, things like coding standards and linters. People in these roles don't know they exist, and so they're running into problems all the time. When um, I know of one particular uh, team, the, uh, the way they use Git, and they do use Git, uh, is every time they need to change something, is they copy and paste the difference to their manager, who takes the entire thing, uploads the zip to GitHub, deletes the main branch, renames it. And that's how they use Git. And that is probably not the best way to use version control. Um, but again, they don't know because they're not really trained on how to use it. So in the future, this coding script is only going to expand. More and more jobs are going to require scripting, and LLMs are going to facilitate that. And it's only going to feed this huge technical debt machine that is going to churn out these massive projects uh, that are going to be someone's problem at some point. So what are the solutions? Well, as software engineers, should we be making best practice more accessible? Uh, is it on us to say, well, that's great code, but have you considered the pipeline? Have you considered the way you're managing that code? Um, but if we don't, how are Vibe coders supposed to know what to look for? Um, maybe we should pop our heads outside of the bubble, uh, and check in with them. There are lots of tutorials online about how to use specific technologies, Python, JavaScript, whatever. But there aren't that many that go, well, great, now I've just taught you how to script something. Here's how you should save it on GitHub. Here's how you should manage it in a team. Here's how you should make sure your data doesn't go outside of the European economic area and cause massive G GDPR issues. Or should we let them sink? It only means more demand for software developers down the line. So, so what can we do in this room? Well, 
there are a load of new mountain climbers that have come with loads of fancy tools. And in this room, we're all up higher on the software engineering mountain. Um, so we really have two options. We can throw down ropes to help them up, inspire best practice, hopefully uh, make a difference when they're starting to learn so they learn the right things, not just hallucinations from an AI chatbot. Or we can do nothing and let fate take the wheel. Um, but before you decide, remember the people that threw down the rope for you when you were starting out. That is my talk done. Thank <laughs> you.